Okay. Mm. Once again, we are back. <laughs> feels good, you know? It feels good to be living out my purpose, doing what God intended for me to do. It is currently 4.30 p.m. I am just now getting ready. I thought today I could do my makeup while simultaneously telling you one about a horrific dating story that I have been through. Something that I have been waiting for. Gold mine stories that I have been keeping um, shoved up my ass just waiting to be released. And I don't know why. <laughs> I was gonna say the lags that have hit and they're ready to be released, but I'm not gonna say that. My name is Morgan. Please subscribe to this channel. Two, I thought I could share with you the most genius dating hack that I have ever taken part of. Three, the third burning topic was how do you get over someone? So basically this is my talk show. This is my live studio audience. I have all of my makeup stuff. We are first going in. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Face Primer. The story starts back in 2016. I was working at on the border, Mexican cantina. I would do doubles almost daily and I would be there from like 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. serving chips and salsa, talking to the suburban dads. I actually really loved it. Anyway, I'm working one day, I meet this guy. We all know that that is where things go wrong. I think for a lot of people it doesn't end up like that and they end up actually dating someone and like they end up getting married and having kids. I have not yet experienced that. I have only gone from like the boy meets girl to like hell level destruction. So, <laughs> so I meet this guy, let's call him Joe. Joe's a good name. I haven't been hurt by a Joe yet. All right, we're going in with the MAC Studio Fix Foundation. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Joe and I talked here and there. Like when I was in town, I would hit him up, be like, hey, I'm in town. Sometimes we would hook up. Like we just had a little, I would call it a summer fling that lasted for three years. I had just got done working my double shift on a Friday at On The Border. And if you've ever worked at a restaurant, you know like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, prepare to get your absolute shit rocked. Like, you are gonna go home with chips in your hair, refried beans within your fingernails, I had queso like dripping down my titties half the time. When you get home, I would look at myself in the mirror and be like, oh my, whoa. <laughs> I'm laying in bed like, I don't think I can ever move again. And then you hear the little noise that's like, ding and you try to keep your eyes closed, you're like, you know what? It can probably wait. Ta -ding. Another one. My eyes crust open. I have chips in my hair. I am a mess. And I see a text from Joe. And he's like, hey, do you want to come to this party tonight? I'm thinking about the logistics of this. I'm like, okay, can you send me an address? He sends me an address. It is an hour away. And I say, okay. No. 10 minutes later, I'm back with my eyes closed and I get another Ta -da. Joe says, I really want you to come. I Olympic speed sprinted myself to the bathroom, full body shave, full hair wash, full blowout, full face and makeup, full outfit within 20 minutes. I was sweating. So I'm texting Joe the whole time like, hey, um, it's already pretty late. Like, are you sure when I get there in an hour, emphasis, it's gonna take me an hour to get there. You're still like gonna be down to like hang out. And he's like, oh my God, yeah, I will be waiting for you. Let me know when you're outside. I cannot wait to see you. I bet you look beautiful tonight. Like blah, 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 blah. So I get in my car, my car has no gas. I speed rocket to a 7-Eleven in the middle of the night. Well, it's like 10.30. I get out of my car. The scariest looking dudes I have ever seen in my life come up to me and they're like, hey, where are you going tonight? And I said, oh, I'm going to, s to my friend's house to hang out. And they said, oh, we want to come too. I have a long drive ahead of me. Nice talking to you. This guy at the gas station comes up to me. He is smoking a cigarette, blows the smoke in my face and says, I really want to hang out with you tonight. I said, oh my God, I am not a bad bitch like that. I am not going to be throwing punches at a guy at 7-Eleven at 1030 at night. I'm just not. I was 
dearly afraid for my life. I was the only person getting gas. Where was their car? I don't know. Why were they at the gas station? I don't know. The guy that works in the gas station comes out. He like brings me in the gas station and he's like, those guys come every night and they are trying to pick up girls every night and their approach needs to be a little better because guess what? No girl ever goes home with them. Can't imagine why. Anyway, I'm driving, I'm driving. Oh my God, I'm gonna see Joe. Like I'm so nervous. He <laughs> he. I pull up to Joe's house an hour later. It is now 11.30 p.m. Keep in mind, I was sending updates along the way because he'd be like, how far away are you? How far away are you? I'm like, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes. I get there, I say, hey, I'm here. Tee hee. Effortlessly, I just arrived here. Hi, ready to have a good time? Like, who wants to play cup pong? He doesn't answer. So I text him again. <laughs> I'm really here. Like, I'm physically here. Doesn't answer. I called him, no one answers. I'm like, okay, maybe he doesn't have his phone. I'll wait for five minutes. I am sitting out there. It, keep in mind, it is December in Colorado. It is freezing. I waited my ass there for 30 minutes. At around midnight, I'm like, all right, I really have to pee, bad. Aggressively, I, my legs are shaking. My stomach feels like it's gonna fall out of my body. I looked up the nearest gas station and to my surprise, most gas stations in Colorado close around midnight and it is now midnight 30 because i've been waiting an hour for joe to let me into his friend's sketchy house i desperately am going to piss myself i have to make the executive decision that i need to get out of the car in a random park and go piss in a tree by myself it is snowing outside it is midnight 30 then after I physically pissed in a public park, my dignity is already gone. It is time for me to go home. Get home an hour later. I don't even think I was furious. I think I was just in disbelief of the series of events of like me laying in my bed with chips in my hair to going to a full body shave to almost getting killed at the gas station to driving Joe's house for him to not then open the door. I was just in disbelief. I had no other emotion than disbelief. So it is the next day, 5 p.m., <laughs> 5 p.m. He texts me and says, oh, I'm so sorry, I fell asleep. I said, this is it for me. They always come back. It has been like a few months since I've talked to Joe. I am going to Vegas for my birthday. I get a text on my birthday from Joe. Hey, miss you a lot. I want to be friends again. I said, okay. <laughs> oh God, Jesus Christ. Here's the thing, I forgive all over time. I don't know if this is a form of self-destruction, but I just like to forgive and forget. Emphasis on forget. So Joe and I start talking again, like, oh my gosh, I forgot about all of the good qualities of Joe. He has some great qualities. <laughs> Into him again, we're FaceTiming nearly every night. Like we are keeping constant, constant communication. I'm going to be back in your town this weekend. Maybe we should get together. And he says, great, 100%, I would love to see you. Friday night, meet me here. Downtown, meet me here. This is not my first rodeo. Especially with Joe, this is not my first rodeo. So I am not going to meet you downtown. I'm gonna go downtown with my own group of friends. We can meet in the middle. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe Joe has grown into a nice, respectable, beautiful man. Lord have mercy, that never happens. I bought a whole outfit. I bought some new mascara. I was rocking and ready to go. I am really excited, okay? Maybe more excited than I should have been. Like, oh my God, this is so scandalous. Like I'm meeting up with Joe. Anyway, I just went in with Tarte Shape Tape. This is how you keep all of your secrets to yourself. Goof proof eyebrow pencil. I'm Ubering downtown because I am fully ready to get unbelievably shit faced that was my intention i'm sorry to admit it sorry mom so i get in with my new little outfit into the uber i'm so excited i'm texting my friends hey i'm on the way where i live to the city is like 30 35 minutes so i have a long drive i was getting a little bored something inclined me to go on to facebook.com so facebook is not my forerunner in the apps i have to go digging through folders to try to find it i open facebook and the first thing i see joe is in a relationship 
with Sarah. I said, wait a second. <laughs> it must be a glitch. I deleted the app and reinstalled it because I was like, something must not be right. I get back on. Sure as can be, Joe is in a relationship with Sally Bob. I look at the date. Joe has been in a relationship with Sally Bob from Kentucky since beginning of August. <laughs> and it is mid to late September. I have gone from really excited to really unwell really fast. A little toxicity meter in my brain just went high. I text him a screenshot of his Facebook relation status and I say, go hang out with your girlfriend. Send. Red receipts on. So I go downtown with my friends. Honestly, I'm having a fantastic time. I put my phone on do not disturb. You cannot reach me. You cannot find me. Once I went to the bathroom, I was talking to these girls and I was like, oh my God, let me get your Instagram, blah, 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 blah. I go onto my phone, take do not disturb off. There is about a hundred and a half text messages from Joe being like, where the f are you? And I don't even think I was being petty because I'm not the one that lied about being in a committed relationship for the past six weeks. After I fill in my eyebrows, I just like to gently brush them out. 24 hour brow setter. Around 2 a.m. I believe is when they start closing the bars down. Now, times were different back then. You could be on your absolute worst behavior back in the day. Final call, last drink, get the f out. I turn around and Joe has come to find me. <laughs> Where's Waldo? You found me. So I look at my friends, I'm like, hey, you guys can leave. Leave, go home, have a good rest of your night. I'm gonna sit on this bench outside with Joe and we're gonna talk about this. 2 a.m. is when the crazies come out. We all know that. Mom has told you once and I am telling you again, be home before 2 a.m. Just be home. They're both like scream sobbing at each other. You did this, you did this, you're dating this girl. And he was like, well, you moved. And I said, okay, what? <laughs> like, I've never been in such a mess in my life than when I was sitting on a park bench at 3 a.m. downtown Denver, nearly blackout drunk, in the snow, scream crying with this guy who has been dating this girl for the past month and didn't want to mention it to me at all. Then as it always does, it went from scream mess to emotional mess where we are both confessing our love for each other and he's basically saying like, I'm going to break up with my girlfriend for you. Ladies, if a man ever says that, one, don't f with a guy with a girlfriend. If a guy has a girlfriend, you are not in their DMs, ever. I don't care if you think you're soulmates. I don't think you care if he's dating the wrong girl. If he has a public girlfriend that he is expressing to the world, this is my girlfriend, he is off limits. That is what I've now learned. Now granted, that has always been my philosophy, but at the, I didn't know he had a girlfriend, so. So there was a little teensy, teensy bit of a miscommunication there. Me now would judge myself heavily. Me at the time was naive and quite honestly stupid. I get all flustered and I'm like, you're gonna break up with your girlfriend for me? Like that is so romantic, romantic, like, oh, romance. <laughs> Stupid, 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 stupid. I'm not stupid, but that was a stupid moment. After a very long emotional night on the literal street corner, not only were there men trying to sell me drugs, there were men thinking that I was there to sell them drugs. I was like, listen, Joe, I'm trying to sleep tonight. This is the Naked 3 palette. I love this color, it's called Limit. I wake up the next morning after a chaotic night. I am trying to collect the pieces. I'm like, okay, let me see. Did we post anything on Instagram? I go and I check on Instagram. <laughs> I was blocked. I was blocked from Instagram. I was blocked from Facebook. I was blocked from Venmo. I was blocked from the phone number. I even tried to email this bitch and I was blocked. I told dad you're not gonna answer. Gosh, sorry. I keep getting phone calls from my parents. I'm flying to Colorado tomorrow, so I'm correlating. I'm so excited. Oh, where did I leave off? Oh yeah, me being blocked. <laughs> this guy just told me that he was in love with me, ready to basically break up with his girlfriend, send it to Vegas, go to the altar. He didn't say that I made that up, but he did say that he was like, 
madly in love and blah, 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 blah. This is also why I have a weird trauma bond with Panda Express because the first thing that I did was I went to Panda Express, got a double orange chicken with chow mein, and I said, this is the lowest moment of my life. This is the lowest moment of my life. You know how it's kind of a big deal the first time you post your significant other on your Instagram feed because that makes it very official, very exclusive. Like we are dating, this is my girl, this is my guy. Everyone knows. So I go on my fake account. I'm lurking, 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 lurking through this God forbidden app that causes people nothing but pain. And I go to his profile and it is a photo of him and his girlfriend. And he says, love you, babe. Men <laughs> are despicable. I more than anything feel so incredibly awful for this other girl because I'm like, your boyfriend, one, sucks. I get it, I get the charm, I get the appeal, I've been there too. You made it further than I did, you must be a f champion. Little did she know her boyfriend was up to some tomfoolery in the alley telling some other girl that he was in love with her. Like, imagine, imagine. And that is the day that I realized men are despicable, despicable creatures. Not all of them, but a lot of them. It was really that moment for me that I decided I will never set myself up to be like too dependent on a man because yikes. Now I take the darkest shade, this is the brush that comes with it, I'm not a fancy bitch. Dab it in here, dab it in here. Winged liner. A few months pass. I am living in LA at this point and I get called to jury duty in Aurora, Colorado. So I call them, I'm like, hey, I actually live in LA. And they're like, hey, that sucks. You still gotta be here. You know when you start dating someone, you are doing like a deep, deep analysis on them. Everything that you could find about them that is possibly on the face of the interweb, you are going to know about them. He like talked about his other girlfriends before, whatever. She was a beautiful, beautiful girl. Had like a very unique name also. Some people that have simple names, like I have a simple name. So if you walked into a room and someone was like, oh, Morgan Adams, there could be 12 billion of us. But then there's some people that have unique names where there's only one of them. She's like one of those one of a kinds where like she is the only person with her name. That is so powerful. Why my parents couldn't have given me like a level up name, I don't know. I got stuck with a basic name. Say this girl's name is Tangerine Guava. I show up to a jury duty. I go into this big room full of people and they're like, okay, we're gonna call everyone alphabetically. <laughs> we get about 150 names in. They say Tangerine Guava. I had no other option than to full body thrust and look at this girl that I have done like intensive FBI research on. My jaw hit the floor. I was like, there is no way that this is real right now. There is no way that this is real right now. So then they split you up into little subgroups. Me and this girl get split up into the same group. And I think it's very apparent that I know her and she knows me. So we sit next to each other. My heart is pounding. I am like in my deepest, darkest fiction brain. I could not have thought of something like this happening. We get to chatting, we chat and chat. Then we address the elephant in the room that we have both dated the same guy without success, might I add. We are sitting there basically trauma bonding, like, oh, he did this to you? Oh, he did that to me too. Oh, I thought that was so weird. It's really crazy. A zebra never can change its stripes, first of all. This other girl that he dated is like beautiful. She's really smart. She's funny and cool. So I'm like, okay, clearly this guy at least has one thing going for him. He has good taste. I think the next sub point was how do you find like closure and how do you move on? That was the moment for me that I found peace. Okay, clearly this guy just 
cannot get it together. I have now found my peace and I have found my healing. At the time when you're going through either a friendship breakup or a relationship breakup or even just like a fling breakup, it really, really sucks. Everything is just uh, like out to get you. You cannot have fun. You cannot think about anything else. It feels like almost life consuming. The thought of thinking about this person, checking up on their Instagram, checking up on their Facebook, seeing what they're doing on Venmo. Need to try your absolute best to stop checking up on them. One, because the more you check up with them, it's almost like you can build a relationship with someone just by following so in depthly what they're doing and you like find a weird connection with that, or at least that's what I've done in the past. Find little things you're like, okay, they did this, they did this. That's your way of still feeling close to them. I am a big fan of the mute button, mute the post, mute the stories. I've learned a few times to stop unfollowing people, but... <laughs> I wish there was like a solid piece of advice of, oh, this is how you move on. You need to find something to do other than sit and think about it. Whether that's going to a workout class, getting a pet, going for a walk around your neighborhood every day, like calling your parents, calling a friend, asking someone to go to dinner. Like you really need to be aggressive with yourself and keeping your schedule built up so you don't feel like you are waiting for this person to reach out for you. And I think that's even healthy in like, building a friendship and building a relationship is knowing that you have your own life. It's like you can depend on your friends and your friends can be there for you and you can depend on people, but you cannot depend on someone to create your life for you. We just need to find some hobbies, people. <laughs> we gotta find some hobbies. This is my favorite mascara. This is Marc Jacobs. Moving on to the next subtopic getting back into dating. All right, so for a long time, I was closed for business. Now I am back in business. So I have been dabbling around and something that my friend and I came up with that I believe to be the most genius thing that I have ever had the pleasure of being a part of. Ladies at home, even gentlemen, we were talking about how you don't really go out to bars to meet people. So you kind of almost have to either slide into someone's DMs on Instagram or get on a dating app. Here is the concept, a joint Tinder account. <laughs> My friend and I get on Tinder and we make a joint account. It is called like, her name and my name. I'm not gonna expose her yet. They're the same Tinder account, so you have it logged into each of your phones. Oh, this mascara is almost out. It's kind of dry and crusty and just not giving me the full effect. There is nothing more I hate than having to buy new makeup. <sighs> disrespectful. The disrespect is unbelievably disrespectful. A NYX white eyeliner and I just like to do the slightest bit in my waterline and it makes me look like I've had caffeine for days. Three cute photos of us together, like as a duo, because this is our duo account. And then one individual shot that shows us in our best light. This cannot be like Becky from Home Ecky that you're making your joint Tinder account with. You know, there's nothing worse than when you go out with a friend and everyone's ready to go home and like, there's that one friend that's like, I'm not coming home for the next three hours and you guys are all like, fuck. So you have to be with someone who is on your same wavelength that when you look at them and say, I'm ready to leave, they're like, bestie, let's go. But the magic within this, right? So there is a few points of why this is just brilliant. Very intrigued by the fact that there's two of you. Me and my friend want to hang out with you and your friend. Then it works, right? Because then you're hanging out in a group situation and it's not a one-on-one -on -one awkward date. A group of four going out for a good time. There's less pressure because you don't know which one you're going to like or like you've, you're not going to like any of them, but then you're in a group and you're with your friends so you can have fun either way. And now this is the tactic ladies at home. You reach out to these guys and they're like, oh, let's get together tonight and like get drinks. You say, okay, we've made a reservation at this time. Meet us there. You are telling them your reservation is 30 minutes later than it actually is. So you can go there with your friend and have a drink and get mentally and physically prepared. Feel like you're sitting in the chair nicely. You are ready for these two guys to show up. Don't milk it. Don't do anything. Just a simple meet us here. They show up every time. They show up every time. It is just like funny. 
It is so fun. So if you are looking to get back into the dating field and you're a little uncomfortable being on the apps and you can't really meet people in person, get a buddy and you are gonna get on this Tinder. You are gonna make a profile with your friend and you are gonna say, me and my friend will meet you here at this time with you and your friend. You will have the time of your life. If something bad happens, I did not recommend this at all. Just ladies, keep your standards high. Only do something if you really want to do it. You should be having fun, okay? And if you are not having fun, <laughs> may we all find peace and blessings and someone who doesn't want to ruin our life. I've had this palette since the beginning of time. I've used a whole one of this and I moved on to this bronzer and this blush, but it still works and I'm not ready to buy another one. So it's gonna keep on working. I like to do translucent powder after I do like bronzer and blush and highlighter. I just feel like it makes everything a little less aggressive and makes everything stick a little better. Let me know if there's anything else you would like me to talk about while I do my makeup or if you want to hear more dating stories because I have quite a lot that I could share with the crowd. <laughs> mm, this is the face of a girl who is ready to get her life destroyed by another man. <laughs> okay, bye.